Welcome back everybody. So today I'm just going to try and get a couple of small things done here and there just on the Miata. So I'm just going to try and get the trim around here back on the car. Get the antenna back in here since I definitely don't need that sitting out there. Get, get this top on as well just so I can actually try and get all these tires moved and get the bumper back on. And just a few other things. Try and get the headlight pieces back on the car and just a lot of small things like this thing it doesn't have the shroud doesn't have the top it's just sitting right there on the ground and yeah just one very small thing that i did here i had to get the flashlight because still a little dark is the lock right here looks good on this side doesn't exactly look like that in real life though but that's because i actually when I got the Miata, it actually wasn't working. Uh, the lock was completely busted off, and he actually had this cord. This is a little like shoestring, kind of sitting out of that as a hole, and he would just tug on it and uh, use that in order to unlock the trunk. So I actually just went online to see to look to see if I could find a replacement, and literally those locks cost like $150 to replace. So. I said, screw that. Uh, tried looking around for something else I could find. And that is now my furnace. Lovely. So, anyway, looked around to see what else I could find, and I actually found a, uh, a lock for an RV that I could use that was like two and a half inches long. And I'm like, ooh, you know what? That'll be perfect. And it kind of was. That's exactly what I found. It just and I made it work. I used I kinda had to drill through that part and use the existing pieces in order to connect them, but it worked just fine. I think I still have to modify it a little bit because that thing has to stick out a little bit in order to get to uh, this piece right here. So probably gonna have to mess with that a little bit. But that's okay. I'll either get to that one today or sometime in the future. And, uh, oh, yeah, and same thing with today as well. I'm going to try and get uh, the side mirrors back on as well. So, just a couple things. The lock will probably be later today or even to some other day, but all the other stuff I'll try and get to today. And, uh, yeah.
All right, that part's done. Just wanted to quickly get that done and over with just a little off camera because trying to find the screws for these was a bit of a pain in the ass. But that part's nice and done. So on the next part. Okay, now for the hard part. Wish me luck. I was able to take this off by myself last time, so hopefully I'll be able to do it again. Okay, that was a little heavier, but actually glad I was able to get that on there. Holy crap. So, it's definitely still a little dirty, but oh well, so. Black top on top of the purple and blue. Not bad. So, gonna put the bolts back in, get this settled, and yeah.
All right, it's been a while. Uh, I've definitely got a lot more things done to the car. Uh, actually, I went up just without even grabbing the camera, just go, 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 getting a bunch of things done just because I want this car done by the springtime once all the snow starts melting and just get it out there, get it inspected, and make sure I can go and drive this thing. But it's looking a lot better. It's now pretty much all set up and good to go. Even here, you can see just off camera, like I said, I got the spoiler back on here and I didn't even really need to put that one on camera it wasn't difficult at all I put this uh, one back on versus the one you can see back over there the black one it's because this one already had the holes I just had to re-drill them because they are just bonded in so I just had to pre-drill those again and then this spoiler just dropped back in place so that wasn't a difficult thing to do so I just again went without the camera and just did that right away and other than that it was pretty much just putting body pieces back on so i put this back on here uh i kind of wish that the lock kind of sat out there a little bit better but it i can definitely still access it with the key so that part's fine put the rear bumper back on connected it with the uh, plastic pieces so that's all good there then other than that it's been pretty much washing the car waxing it making sure it's all nice and smooth and getting lights fixed on here so what i've done so far is the biggest issues were the side marker lights so these guys all along the side uh, i believe just the one on the uh, right side there was the only one that was working so this one here just a wire was cut so i just need to resolder that back in place and it's fine this one back here i honestly think that the light bulb was uh the backwards or something like that because it had an LED in place and I'll show you why that matters and then this one right here actually the original owner must have um, extended the wiring because I checked that out and it was actually coming undone underneath the heat shrink so I just had to re-solder that put more heat shrink underneath it and then it worked just fine so I metered all this stuff and it was working just fine and then other than that the other, other thing was for these lights here the brake light on this side was not working so just some sort of a loose connection i just took the bulb out and put it back in and then it seemed to work and then other than that it was pretty much just everything on the interior here so i had these lights those were all not working so obviously you can see now those are working i had to get some replacement bulbs for that and then just started working right away thank god and the dash here so i installed a bunch of leds so those are now good and there was one on the right corner here that was out so that wasn't too bad it was just for this plastic shroud here just undo two bolts on the bottom it pops out and there's four bolts two on the top two on the bottom for the actual dash portion itself and then there's just Three, connect, three connections inside. Two on each side for the electrical and then the one for the speedo on the inside there. So that was all that I've done there. And that's pretty much it so far. So there's still a few things I need to get done with. I actually took this thing out for a quick drive. Just, I did an oil change, did a couple of those things and decided to take it out for a spin filled it up with gas and then I realized uh oh it's uh, leaking gas so I immediately took it back home and parked it again and I haven't really been able to take a good look at it since then I just haven't noticed that right underneath where the fuel filter is located that it was just gushing out fluids so I have taken this little shroud off here just to inspect and see at the filler pipe where if there was any sort of leak and I haven't seen anything here at least so it must be underneath. So I've taken this off here just to take a good look. And this is pretty much as far as I've gotten because just some of these screws are in the way of uh, where the uh, bar is. So. so that's the one. The next thing I'm gonna be tackling. And other than that, I haven't, no one's ever really seen them yet, but. Unfortunately, they're very cheap wheels, but I got 
so nice bronze wheels to go with the car here that are on 205s and 195s so I got that going as well so but yeah those are honestly the last big things I have to do here is one on the inside of the door hatch is there I cannot uh, lock it from the inside this is a little uh, stuck so I'm gonna have to take door panels off on both the passenger and the driver's side see if I can lube something up to make those actually move again so that's one two is definitely fix that gas leak I need to figure out where the leak is see if I can seal it somehow so that's the biggest one three all these steam lights the existing ones that were on here just were all completely dead they did not work got some replacements and they were the wrong style so I just need to, I'm still waiting on the new ones to come in and then that will be done so that one's a very very easy one and then four is another very easy one but a very uh, usual thing that happens is just the uh, oil dipstick the portion on it just snapped so I'm just gonna fix that and find some sort of a replacement or figure out just a DIY version of just putting something else on some other hook in order to make that work and it's not really a fix but just the other fifth one is just replacing the wheels because I definitely need new tires on here in order to fix the uh, get it properly inspected and make sure that that all passes so yeah that's those are the last thing to do okay so here's what I was referring to earlier so on each of these marker lights I had to go along and troubleshoot what I had to do in order to fix all of these so a good thing to have obviously if you're working on any sort of car is to have just some sort of a multimeter I, and I say multimeter because a lot of times you're going to maybe check to see if you have voltage so a voltmeter you're going to be checking for amperage so an ammeter maybe the resistance on something so an ohmmeter and might as well just get the whole package put in the multimeter but what I wound up doing is, in order to test for all these, there's just both the side terminals here. So I just want to make sure that there's actually voltage on it. So if you just put it on the terminals on one side, on the terminals on the other side, very easy. And then you can see that, oh look, it has 11.56 volts, so 12 volts. We're good. We have voltage. So I pretty much had to go around on each side and test to see if I was getting anything. Oh look one side I wasn't getting anything okay let's troubleshoot see what the hell the problem is and that's where I was able to see that I was either having a wire that was cut or something like that was not properly connected somewhere and it was, I was able to finish all that now I was also finding that on the one on the back left over there that the uh, it originally had not this style, these are one of the new ones I got, but another LED that was installed in there. And it was installed backwards. Now, there's a reason for that. It is an LED, and yeah, you can obviously skip this. I'm an electrician, so this is kind of my jam here, but an LED stands for a light emitting diode. And what a diode is, is, is actually a component that permits electri electrical currents to flow in one direction and not another. So it is used and locked in rectifiers for battery chargers and not not even for like automotive purposes but like it is used in AC currents in order to essentially change it into DC and you can still use these on DC stuff like your car for example because it already is flowing in one direction it's already DC however that being said if you are using these it can only work in one direction so as you can see it's fully in place it is not turned on because it is backwards so let me flip that around there you go it works now that's only going to be an LED here is one of the originals that I decided to swap out that's still good and this one is an incandescent bulb so I took the LED out put this one in oh look it works now let me try flipping it around putting it backwards and it still works that's because this one is just a normal semiconductor. It has just a film in there and it can flow in either direction. It does not matter. Versus the LED that only flows in one direction, not the other. So you have to make sure that this goes in the right direction. And as funny as it is, 
it does not even say on the tips here which one's positive, which one's negative. You kind of just have to figure it out. So, well, so thankfully that was something I was able to figure out very, very easily on the back there. Is just put my multimeter up to it. Oh, I'm getting voltage. Okay, let me just test to see if this is put in backwards, and sure enough, it was. But since I got a bunch of new bulbs, I just decided to swap it out anyway, and then I just kind of kept all the, the new ones and all the old ones just in a separate bag that I can just use for later just to say something fails. All right, so I just finally put the new wheels on, and it looks awesome however funny thing is that apparently this car had mis mismatched lug nuts didn't even realize it because i never took them off but they all had essentially in total of three 19 millimeters these ones are brand new ones i put on some locking lug nuts but they're all of them were like a 21 millimeter and the rest of them were the 19 however there's only like three of them in total. So I was not able to put all the lug nuts on. Hooray! So I just set it down once I get got all these on. Like literally the one in the back there has just the one lock and lug. I only had three of these. So I just put as much as I could on, torqued them, and set down on the ground. And obviously this thing's not moving. I'm not driving this thing until I get some more ordered in. But it's just going to have to sit like this until... The new ones come in and I can get all four on each wheel and probably get this done. But that side, I think it looks great with these wheels on it. So, and don't worry, sometime in the future after I get this thing inspected, I have some coilers here. Nothing too fancy, just max speeding rods that I got. So this massive gap hopefully won't be here sometime in the future.